Let's talk about our sponsors. I'm confident most of us are, have already had your food. And that's sponsored by Quancast. Quancast is a... Uh, <laughs> Sponsoring something that's not pizza, yeah. something that's healthy. Uh, yeah, so Quancast is, if you don't know, it's a big data company that happens to be in the advertising space. Um, they offer products like a free uh, audience measurement tool, which gives uh, website owners of their traffic and uh, audience demographic data. Um, and they also uh, offer this product that uh, is uh, real time programmatic advertising on the internet. Um, so I'll uh, just give you an idea, like the peak transaction per second they're handling it currently is at uh, 2 million transactions per second. How do I know that? Because I work for them. <laughs> 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 I just checked the data like just today. So that's the number that we're handling at the moment. Mm -hmm. So visit quantcast.com if you want to learn more about the product or quantcast.com slash jobs if you're interested in working with Quantcast. Um, next. Thank you, JSConf Asia. And now, uh, how uh, Thomas say a few things? Well, okay, I'm largely unnecessary to talk much about it. It seems everybody is familiar with it already. Uh, next mm -hmm. January, we're going to have three days of a hopefully pretty awesome event. Uh, two days at the Capitol Theater and one day at the Shangri-La Rasa in Sentosa with wow. 20 workshops. Wow. Uh, so every attendee will get to choose out of 20 workshops two. Uh, to attend and it's going to range from CSS front end over remote performance over IoT, VR, AR, WebGL, it's going to be a lot. So there should be something for everybody and we have so many because we have so many people. Um, it's going to be expected about 400 to 500 attendees um, and be sure there are going to be bonfires in the evening <laughs> because once we're on the beach already, right, we throw some cocktails in. It's going to be really nice. Uh, and then the last day we are back at the Capitol Theatre for some um, look back talks and, and audience talks. So if you're not being a speaker at the event, you can get still five minutes talk time uh, on our main stage and talk to the audience, um, whatever you want to share about. It's called our lightning talk segment. And uh, then we're going to go into the keynote talks and end the day and then a big after party. So that's the conference. The tickets are there. There's Singapore JS as a discount code for 20% off. Ticket price increase monthly. So make sure if you are willing to, to get there, buy early. Save you a bunch. All right. So, and uh, quickly, Collision 8. Uh, Xini and uh, her team have prepared this for us so that we have a, a nice venue for tonight and can run this workshop in privacy. Um, yeah, we can even darken the windows and stuff. It's oh. High tech stuff and here. And the view, right? Yeah. And the great view too. So uh, much appreciated there. Um, if you're looking for co-working, talk to them as well. Thank you. Back to me. All right. So the agenda for today is already published on the website. Uh, we're at 7 o'clock, slightly late, and then we're going to start the panel after the introduction. Uh, and then we're going to have a break, uh, just mingle and chat. And then uh, I will be uh, given, giving out like pens and paper, and then you can start like noting down your ideas or topics for the talk that you have in mind. If there is any, if not, then talk to people. Maybe ask them like what are you interested in learning the next tech conference mm -hmm. um, so that's just an opportunity for you to do that and then afterwards Thomas is gonna come up and show you some of the sample proposals that he's received as a conference organizer um, and then we're gonna go into proposal writing uh, and in the end we will have like round table discussion I guess we can just like we, can, we have around 30 people so we'll break into like three groups um, and then each group will have uh, one to two mentors and then you know then we can just like every one of us can just work on our own proposals um, and then in the end if you manage to finish something because the proposal can be very short you will see the samples later and then, then if you finish something and you want to present and get some feedback you're welcome to stand here just read it out loud and see what people have to say I okay? kept the slot free at the conference if there's somebody proposing something really cool today I'm happy to give that. Nice. Here we go. <laughs> Very generous. Um, all right, let's go into introductions. So this is my time. Welcome again. Good job in making it here today. Um, 
So this workshop is inspired by this thing called a uh, Global Diversity C uh, CFP Day. It's a mouthful. Uh, it's happening sometime in the future, in February next year. Uh, but I'll talk more about that later. So, but the goal of this workshop, workshop and the other one is one of the same, which is to get you to become speakers on tech conferences. So, um, I'm your host. My name is Lu Wei. You can call me Wei if you want. Um, I'm an engineer with Quantcast. You already know that. Um, so, I'm going to start us off with a story. Um, story goes back five years when I was at my first job. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was uh, Pivotal Labs, Singapore. Now it's known as Pivotal. So it was my very first job, fresh out of college. And then it's half a year into this job, I was just like working at my desk. And this managing director uh, of uh, Singapore office, Carl Carl Martin, he walked he walk towards me. He's like, um, would you like to give a talk at Red Talk, Red Dot RubyConf? I'm like, <laughs> talking to me, <laughs> really? <laughs> I imagine someone who's worked for six months and then your, your boss asks you to give a talk. I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, and then Carl's like, oh, think about it. Uh, and then just brainstorm ideas and then next week we'll talk about it. Like, we'll, we'll look through what, what topics you have in mind. Next week, I, uh, during our one-on-one, one -on -one, I was like, I presented my, I think, in total three ideas. Mm -hmm. I thought really hard about them, and then I only came up with three. Um, and then he, he went through every one of them with me, and then he said, uh, he, 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 picked, he helped me pick one, mostly by asking me questions like, what are you going to talk about in this one, uh, which one do you prefer, and all that. So then in the end, we picked one, which is on pair programming. Um, after we picked one, then he's like, all right, now go home and write outlines for the talk. I'm like, okay. Went home next week, we worked together on the outline. Um, he helped me improve it. The week after, we worked on the slides, and he asked my colleague Tommy to help me gather pictures. We even took some pictures for my talk. Uh, and then, just like that, after weeks and weeks of work, I eventually became a speaker at, at Red Dot RubyConf, which Winston organizes. Uh, used to organize. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Red Dot RubyConf is like the Ruby conference in Singapore. Uh, and then from there on, that was like my first conference talk. And then later on, like I, I, wor uh, I, I, I gave talks on, um, on RubyConf Taiwan, RubyConf China, uh, JSConf Asia, and also Camp JS in Australia, Bitcoin conference in in Beijing, and just like I, I even give a guest uh, guest lecture in um, in SMU to post <laughs> to graduate students. So so yeah, so I've come a long way. And then the day that uh, Peter uh, Atkin he approached me about this global diversity C uh, CFP day. Uh, and the idea of giving a workshop to help potential speakers, I thought back to the five years ago when my manager literally made me a speaker. So becoming a first time conference speaker is really hard work, and I know that. And nobody should be doing that alone. So that's why we're all here today. Uh, we want to give you all the help that you need, and then we all want to help each other. Because like, I'm still nervous just, sitting, just standing right in front of you and talking about this. Uh, so like we, we all have room for improvement. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna do here. All right. Um, without further ado, let's invite our panelists up here, and then we're gonna discuss. All right. Where are my questions? All right. So first thing first, uh, let's do a round of introduction. How about we start with ladies? Uh, you can answer questions like who are you, what do you do, and then what are your past speaking experiences. Um, okay, my name is Hui Jing. I run Talk CSS. If you've ever showed up, uh, <laughs> I have cookies sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I kind of work for this company called Wismut Labs, and I'm uh, just do, I do front end stuff basically. And yeah, I strong arm people to be speakers at my meetup because nobody wants to speak. <laughs> Next. <laughs> My name is Chinmay. I run a couple of meetups uh, in Singapore, uh, namely Hackware uh, and Papers We Love. 
which uh, which is politely to speak at. Um, <coughs> I've spoken at a few conferences, uh, did, mostly did workshops. I think that was I did a lot more workshops than I did conferences. Uh, but I've spoken at a web audio conference. So I do mostly audio stuff. Um, that's sort of really my passion. But I'm generally involved in random geeky stuff, geek camp and whatnot here and there. Uh, my name is <coughs> Winston. Uh, I used to run the uh, Ruby Meetup in Singapore and Red Dot Ruby Conf uh, for four years. Um, so uh, I think I also started like speaking at conference at the same Red Dot Ruby Conf. That was the year that I wasn't the organizer. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, and I still remember ways pair programming talk. Thank you. Mm, yeah. So uh, after that, you know, I've been speaking at other conferences as well in Taiwan, Japan, uh, and even at the meetups. Like I'll always be the filler if no one <laughs> is oh my giving God, a talk. <laughs> 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 you know, like. Hey, anyone's so talking, okay, no, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got a talk and things like that. Uh, but of course, things that are getting better for the Ruby meetups right now, I do, we no longer have to do filler talks. Uh, yeah, but, so, that's what I do. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Gabe Hollenby. Uh, I manage two software development teams at a company called Spire. We make satellites and we do interesting things with data we collect from space. Uh, I've been a software engineer for about, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And I have spoken at a few conferences. In fact, the Red Dot Ruby Conf that Way and Winston spoke uh, at for the first one was, I believe, I think it was my first official conference. <laughs> <laughs> also, so then it was, a, it was a really magical year. Might, might be a theme going on yeah. here. Was it also the first Red Dot Ruby Conf? No, second one. Second. second. Yeah. But I, really, was, I think there was, it really was a magical year, and like a lot of really great people met. I met a lot of great people that year, and that kind of brought me to Singapore a year later. Um, I've also spoken at uh, a few other conferences, uh, including JSConf Asia here uh, in Singapore, uh, and also a JSConf in uh, Scotland, Scotland JS. Um, uh, diversity in the tech community is something that's important to me that I'm passionate about. So uh, I really think that I, I, I've said this before on another panel, but maybe this is like my mantra, but. The last thing we need is like a lot of more white guys speaking about shit at tech conferences. <laughs> so that's you know whatever we can do to get more voices into the room, the better. And our community is much better for it. Uh, so mm -hmm. I want to encourage everybody here, even if you're a white guy, but especially if you're not, uh, to really go go the uh, go the distance, get a little bit uncomfortable. That's how growth happens, and you know, we're here to support you in that. And one thing is that, you know, to, to, to on that point, because I've been running the <coughs> RubyCon for, you know, four years, right? Uh, whenever we do CFPs, actually the number of submissions from people who are here in Singapore is quite disappointing, uh, right? Yeah, so it's very difficult to... I mean, and we want to encourage local speakers as well. So I'll get into that later too. Exactly. So, you know, that's why I think th this, this is a great forum to encourage people to actually submit talks and, and, and be a speaker, like, uh, be a local speaker. <laughs> yep. Yeah, precisely. And also, speaking of Red Out Rubicon, that year being a magic year, that's also where I met my husband. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, so that that's another plus point to becoming a speaker, you know. <laughs> 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 so um, all right. So I shared my experience about uh, becoming first a uh, first time speaker. So next up, I would love you all to share your experience uh, becoming a speaker at tech conferences. The first time. First time. The very first time. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Um. I, I think everybody else probably has more noble um, intentions than I did. The only reason that I think I started speaking is because I, as a, a, a as a Southeast Asian person, am too cheap to pay for conference tickets. <laughs> 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 on the record. I, 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 <laughs> I don't think you're the only one. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think you're the only I one. I think one look at the price and I oh no. Oh no. Um, can I? So at first I was like, can I volunteer? Like, I can carry heavy objects, right? Um, so I, I volunteered for some Agile conference before. That was great. Then you just stand at the back and then you listen to talks for free. Um, but the actual speaking, speaking stuff was actually, um, again, too cheap to pay for a conference ticket. Um, got to know Thomas and Thomas needed a host for CSSCon 2015. I was like, I'll do it. I was like, yeah, sure. So did that. 
which was great because you get first row seats. Um, and you get to talk to everyone. Yeah, and uh, for me, I don't know. For me, hosting is much less stressful than speaking because number one, nobody remembers the host. Nobody cares. Nobody cares who you are. Number two, you get access to all the speakers. That's very and the, important. So so all you do is you just go up to them like so. Um, I'm the host for for uh, the conference. How do I pronounce your name correctly? <laughs> and that's it. Then you get to that, that that's the starter, yeah, and then you get to get, you get to pick everybody's brain. So that was fun. Um. Then I actually did a proper talk uh, the next year CSS called. Um, but after that, I think mo I submit the the one proposal that I got accepted was for a, a conference in Russia. But my first full length talk, because the one I gave at CSS Con was fifteen minutes. Um, full length talk was actually this year at WebConf in Hong Kong, and this was not a CFP. Um, the organizer actually um reached out to me. Uh, it might be, I think, just connections from maybe, I don't know, Thomas or friends or whatever. <laughs> I but didn't know her. It's just out of the blue. Um, she, she, yeah, yeah, she, mm. she DM'd me. Like, sure, why not? Like, you're f like you're, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for the flight. And I'm there. <laughs> 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 no problem. I'll talk whatever you want. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was actually the first full-length mm. um, uh, minute talk that I gave. Uh, it was in Hong Kong. It was no, quite awesome. fun. Yeah. Awesome. Sadly, it wasn't scripted. Uh, yes, uh, it, it will. I'll give another version of it at next year's um, <laughs> JSConf. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that's the first. When next year, not this year. Because uh, JSConf is next year, it's in January. Oh, yeah. Next year's oh. Oh. It's tricky, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your turn. Alright, my turn. So, uh, very similar. Like I was saying, I don't <laughs> think the, the too <laughs> cheap thing is very, very common. So, I used to do what now great Mike Ching does everywhere. I used to help out with a lot of AV stuff. <laughs> That was my way into oh. conferences, so I helped out Thomas with a lot of the AV stuff in the first yeah, couple of JS cons. Previous AV guy. Yeah, I was a previous AV guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the reason, I know, like, Mike's so much better than me, so he's still there, and he's doing so much better job than me, I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, did that for, I did that for Geek Camp, I did that for a bunch of conferences, that's how I got into the whole thing. And, and then it was, it was always, you know, like, hey, you know, you're doing all this stuff with web audio, why don't you talk about this? Or, you know, it's, it's very similar. I think that the whole cheap thing comes in very important. But I think what's, another thing that I want to share is uh, when, a lot, a lot earlier when I was uh, in school or in university, I was very, very nervous as a speaker. And I, I was very, I, I would be the kid who, if, if they just like, oh, you know, why don't you tell me what happened to you yesterday or what did you do on the weekend? I'd be like, ah, no, <laughs> not me, not me. And it took me a lot of time to get over it and to be able to be comfortable to come and sort of sit here. So it was a long journey. It took me a while to even, even if I was comfortable doing AV and whatnot for conferences, to be up here and speak and, you know, tell, tell people my ideas and what, I'm, uh, what I was doing or some cool stuff I was working on. So it was a, a quite a while before I'd, I think I'd, my first talk was probably at a geek camp that I did about, it was probably web audio. So uh, why did you choose geek camp? Uh, because it was a, it was very accessible, I guess, that's the thing. There wasn't much pressure on things and it was, you know, a bunch of friends that was doing things. I think the timing was also right in the stuff that I wanted to do and I had prepared with, uh, and, and the time for the CFP for the conference. And I was doing, I, I think I was also doing an academic conference around the same time, so it was very similar content and mm -hmm. I did one more, uh, more for people, like public consumption, one for more academic consumption at the same time. Cool. I guess what you two have in common, you kind of like slowly worked your yeah. way into the conference. Like at and first you were really a yeah. speaker. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> it's good because yeah. once you know the community, you know you know the people around it, you feel a lot less like scared about going up yeah. because you know that most a lot of the people, you're kind of comfortable. They're your with friends. The, yeah, and also you know how the yeah, whole the landscape so works. Already. Like you know where the con, you know, like the people, speakers, MCs, whatever. So mm -hmm. it helps a lot. So for me, <clears throat> I mean, at that time, uh, I was already speaking at, uh, you know, occasionally at the Ruby meetups. Uh, so then the first Red Dot Ruby Conf came about. Uh, I was really inspired by all the speakers. They were like, wow, you know, so nice, you know, being on stage with Matt, who's the creator of Ruby. Uh, and so next year, you know, the, 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 the following year, Red Dot Ruby Conf was going to be organized again. I'm like, wow. The bar is going to get higher and higher. Right? <laughs> I better be a speaker now. <laughs> if not, you know, I will ne might never be a speaker anymore <laughs> because the bar is just going to go up, right? Standards are going to go up. So I'm like, okay, I, I better do it this year. So I just force myself, you know, to come up with a topic that hopefully is interesting enough and try and go for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my story. <laughs>
Uh, my story is a little bit similar to Winston's in that, uh, and, and what Chime was saying about kind of getting comfortable with the community first. So, I used to live in New York, and I don't think I ever spoke at any of the tech like programming meetups that I used to go to in New York. But then I moved to Sydney, Australia, and uh, I said, okay, I'm going to the Ruby meetup, and I'm, I said, the first meetup I'm going to, I'm going to offer to give a talk, just as a way to force myself to, I guess, get to know people at the meetup more, and not just be like some guy in the corner with a beer who doesn't know anybody. I was like, no, but I'm just going to give a talk, that, that way I'll meet people. Uh, and I did, and, uh, you know, so... I, at that point, even people came up to me afterwards and the years after said, Gabe, I was really impressed how it was your first time at the meetup. You know, you just moved to Sydney and you said, I'm giving a talk. Like, and that, that made me stick out. So it was a great way for me to inject myself into a community and sort of make friends when I didn't know anyone. Uh, and it also kind of gave me the confidence to uh, continue you know, staying in, as part of that community. And, and <coughs> the Ruby community in Australia is amazing. So over the years, uh, I went to a bunch of, uh, they call them Rails camps, it's basically just a bunch of programmers that get together at, at summer camps without internet, uh, and you sit around with your laptops, and sometimes you're working, sometimes you're playing games, or just, you know, being social, and it's amazing. Uh, and so I, I gave, like, little, little kind of unconference sort of talks, like, led just panel discussions like this about different things I was passionate about, uh, and then... I don't remember how I decided to submit a conference proposal to Red Dot Ruby, but somehow I did. I, I, I had earned enough, uh, I guess, uh, confidence by that point to, to think that was a good idea. And I think also I was uh, uh, maybe lured by the siren song of a trip to Singapore. Uh, so that, I mean, that certainly helped. Um, did your company pay for it? I don't remember. Uh, but I, do, I, I honestly don't remember if my company paid for it or not. Um, but it got me to Singapore and, and that was amazing too, right? So like I can say my, speaking of that conference is what, again, I met so many amazing people at that conference that then ended up becoming my, the beginnings of my social network and what pulled me to Singapore a year later was I was looking for a new job and I s remember thinking, oh, I met all those really cool people in Singapore, let me reach out to them. And so I actually was Wei, I messaged Wei and on Twitter, I was like, hey, are you guys looking for any more programmers? Because you guys were really impressive and I really liked meeting all of you. So. Another reason, like you never know about like, what, mm -hmm. where it's going to bring you in terms of you know you, you start you just inject yourself into a community of really great people and they all support you. So yeah, you and, should do it. Yeah, and the visibility mm. that it provides by being a speaker versus just an attendee is totally different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but Gabe brought up a very interesting point, which is you know I, I'm really impressed you you showed up at the meetup like first time just mm -hmm. give us give a talk. I mean like. Weren't you afraid? Like, like, because to me, it's always like that fear is the worst for even getting started to write the proposal. I'm like, what if I'm not good enough? What if my topic is just like shitty and nobody cares about it? You know, all that fear. Yeah. yeah. How, how, like, were you afraid? This is sure. not just a question for you. It's like for yeah. the entire panel. Like, how do you get over that fear? So I was a, I, I was afraid in a sense, uh, especially because the thing I was talking about had nothing to do with Ruby, uh, but it was at a Ruby meetup. So it was like tangentially related because it was like this little web hacky thing I built. <laughs> Uh, it was a, a color picker back before you could use the web inspector in, in your dev tools to say I want to I want to make this CSS rule have this color and you could click on it and like to drag color pick around I made a little JavaScript bookmarklet that would do that for you and I thought that was the bee's knees and so I was just like well I made this tool I'll just show it to these people who maybe do some web stuff and maybe they'll think it's cool so I was nervous because I wasn't even sure that the content was going to be super relevant to them but I you know I was like forget it whatever like they don't it's going to be a quick talk I'm not going to waste too much of the time if they didn't like it Anyway, um, but again, also, it was like, sure, I was afraid, but I was less afraid of that than of, I, I, guess, I guess what I want to say is, I'm not an extrovert. I, I'm, you know, being around a room full of people, at the end of the day, it really does suck it out of me. And I knew that if I was going to a meetup where I didn't know anyone, my natural inclination would have been to be the guy with the beer in the corner, maybe talking to somebody else maybe so it was a way of sort of short-circuiting that part of my personality <coughs> into just saying no we'll do the opposite because that's what's gonna get you talking to people mm -hmm. so that you, you got to push your fear down and, and, and recognize that, you, that there are other ways to to distract yourself <coughs> yeah well I think sometimes yeah I, I mean I do feel the imposter syndrome um, but <clears throat> I guess what helps is uh, just 
try to talk about things that you know you definitely know about all right <laughs> things that you have built sharing your experience yeah. so if it comes you know from from the bottom of your heart and uh, from tons of your experience that you have done it before uh, you're not just you're not just winging it you know through two nights of you know reading <laughs> up some tutorial somewhere i believe that you, you'll be fine uh, and especially um, although you know I guess a lot of us are introverts but once you talk about technical stuff you know I'm sure you'll be able to blabber a lot more like even in interviews right we, I mean we, when, we, when I speak to candidates you do interviews yeah at first you know candidates might be a little bit jittery but you start asking technical questions then you can talk when they start to talk about things that mm. they know about so I, I think JavaScript, the JavaScript framework be like <laughs> <laughs> that's it cannot stop no, really just talk <laughs> yeah. I agree. No, um, one of the things that I always uh, go back to and talk about, you know, getting nervous is um, so, uh, I, I was involved a long time ago when I was in school in uh, this group called Toastmasters. So they do a lot of public speaking training. Uh, somebody there told me that uh, this this phrase this is even the, the the best speaker, even the most uh, prolific speakers in the world have butterflies in their stomach. The difference between you and them is they just have enough practice that they know how to fly, make them fly in formation. So the, 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 way they, the, the way they taught us was you should always... So I'm nervous right now, I can say it. I mean, I'm, I don't know about Are you guys. Sure? Yeah, very sure. <laughs> but it's just after if you practice enough, you know how to use that nervousness and use it to, to push your talk forward, to push your points forward, to push your ideas forward, rather than to sort of make it... Like make you collapse and not want to talk anymore. It's something that comes with practice. It's something that comes with the uh, with a lot of you know trying out things. It doesn't have to be practice in front of people. It can be practice in front of a mirror. Mm. Uh, but a lot of th th that's something that you don't have to be afraid of being nervous. It's something that's very normal mm -hmm. and that everybody experiences all the time they're on stage. So just embrace it and go forward. With it. I think that's something that I learned at Toastmasters and have really helped me a lot. Um, my 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 background is I I'm a, a athlete so. I think what's slightly different is that for, for me, um, you learn to ignore the audience. I know it's mm. not that, it's, it's a bit different if you're public speaking because like you, you are, are speaking to an mm -hmm. audience, but you learn not to let the audience affect you because when, when, when you're playing, because uh, 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 I play basketball, right? When, when you're playing the match, you cannot let sure. whatever the crowd is doing uh, affect the task at hand, whatever you're trying to do. And when you're trying to give a talk, your task at hand is to deliver the talk the best you can. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess uh, Jimmy is right in that you, re no matter how much you practice, just before you go on stage, you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> but once you start, and I think this also comes back to, to my being an athlete, is that at the end of the day, you must have faith that the preparation you have done will deliver. Um, so this is, in Chinese, there's, uh, you, if we translate it to English, it's um, 10 years work off stage for 10 minutes on stage, right? So, so as an athlete, it's the same thing. You train the whole year, the whole year round, and you play maybe like a, a two-week tournament, 365 days for 14 days. So you have to have faith in that 365 days. So that's why, when and for, for me when i when i do give a a conference talk not a meetup talk meetup talk i guess i'm a bit more casual but for conference talk i i feel that people are paying good money to come and see you talk you have to be very prepared mm. like you have to be so prepared that even if you're nervous just before you go on stage the moment you start talking is almost like muscle memory because you rehearsed it so many times that you can probably mumble it in your sleep um that that's why I that and that's that's why I do as well because for for me I think and, and actually I wrote a bit about this before. I feel that as a speaker from Southeast Asia, um we, we you don't see a lot of us in in international conferences. Um partly also because we are, we live so far away. I got rejected because yeah. I live too far away and they they, they just sure. realized Oh she she's like really far away. And so we can't afford to fly you here, sorry. So so there's that. Happens. There's that. So the, the when we do get a chance to, to, to stand on an international stage, I think the is is a harsh reality, but you not only represent you, you're not a white guy. White guys can represent no <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> white guys can represent themselves individually, but you as a Southeast Asian, you are representing the entire group. 
the wow. entire group of us because people don't so much pressure. <laughs> and then no, you're yeah. supposed to take pressure away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not so much pressure, but a response. But a responsibility. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not to overwhelm you, but to, to keep at the back of your mind that you are representing more than yourself. Simply because you're a minority. That's just the, 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 the harsh fact of life. And so it just goes back to make you just be so assured in your preparation that once you stand on stage, the, I think after the first, second slide and yep. you get into it, it will, it, will, it will just go away. Yeah. And I guess like we can always start practicing yes. in local meetups. Yes. Because then mm. Talk CSS yes. is looking for meetups. <laughs> yeah. yes, because, no, yeah, I, think, I think it's a great opportunity because I think the best thing about doing it in meetups is the audience and everybody around is so nice. Yeah. And they're always yeah. there to help you out if, if you know even if you mess up, if you forget something, mm. if your demo doesn't work, they're not gonna hold it against yeah. you. I think it's a great it's a perfect uh, place to practice. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I add something about talk prep too? Um, one of the people I look up to uh, as a conference speaker and as a programmer is a woman named Sandy Metz. She's written some great books. She's given amazing conference talks. I have fond of saying I want to be Sandy when I grow up. Um, she is very vocal about the fact that she gives great talks, right? She says, like, I practice, Sandy, I'm sorry if I'm par paraphrasing. She says something like, I practice like 40 times before I give a talk. Yeah. Like, it's a lot, and it, and it shows, yeah. but uh, that's is possible, right? Even somebody who I think is one of the best conference speakers in the tech scene, she still practices every one of her talks a lot. And she only gives like one talk a year. She works like on her talk all year. And I'm not saying you need to do that for your first talk, but it's possible. And even the best at what they do spend a lot of time uh, preparing. They, they can't just go on stage and wing it, so. Right, yeah. practice, practice, practice. Practice, yes. practice. Right, all right. So then, well, we, we we're already getting into like giving talks, but before that, Right. The first thing to do is to actually write a proposal. Mm -hmm. They call it CFP, I like call for proposal. We write this proposal and send it to conference organizers like Thomas and, uh, and Winston, and they will look through it like, yes, no, yes, no. It's not um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Democratic, you know, it's technically oh, a bit more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally more complicated. So, so now I, I would like to pick your brains because, like, some of you have written CFPs, someone, some of you have seen a lot of CFPs. So, like, what makes a good one? What makes a bad one? Do you have any tips in how to write a good one? It's a good first. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think if you, uh, if you are able to quote a lot of your experience, uh, I think that's what a lot of people would love to hear uh, at uh, conferences, uh, you know, versus, you know, if, they are, if what you're talking about is something that people can Google and find out uh, in like five minutes. Uh, so a lot of people are going to conferences to hear about uh, experiences or even uh, new R&D that you have done, you know, that people have never seen before, uh, that people are interested to know about new practices, you know, how you apply them, uh, new processes, etc. I think these are the things that would really stand out. Um, and so, of course, you, you should be writing uh, a lot more descriptive text about what your talk is actually about and how it would benefit you know, the audience who's going to be listening uh, to your talk. Uh, if you could, uh, if you already had you know, samples of uh, yourself speaking on YouTube, I think that would be a plus as well. You know? mm -hmm. So it would be good for people to gauge you know, uh, whether you're an engaging speaker or you know, whether you put people to sleep. <laughs> right? um, <clears throat> but at the same time, um, I, I actually give a lot of priority to first time speakers. Um, you know, so like I, I feel that uh, everyone has a first time, right? Not everyone starts off being an experienced speaker, uh, etc. So uh, I always give you know benefit of doubt as well. So long as I can see that in, in your CFP, uh, there's really a point that you're trying to drive across that would bring value to the audience, then I think that'll be a worthwhile thing to, to listen to. So many good points there, like pick topic that you're familiar with, mm, you have yeah. experience with, mention that you're a first time speaker in the CFP, <laughs> <laughs> links to your class conference talks, yeah. videos if you have spoken before, mm. or even meet up, maybe. Yeah, meet Some meetups are, are mm. recorded if, by Michael. Yeah. <laughs> All <and> meetups. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Singapore, you're covered by <laughs> engineers.sg. <laughs> <laughs> we want to shout out engineers.sg for yeah. giving all potential speakers yeah. good videos yeah. to submit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like what we just discussed, you know, you just go to meetups, keep giving talks, and then pick the video that you think is the best, and send it to the Big conference Big love also needs speakers. <laughs> 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 Actually, Here we go again. Uh, a, a suggestion would be, go back and watch your own talk, 
uh, on engineers that actually, or if that you know Mike Cheng can't make it for some time for whatever reason, record your own video uh, and go look at your own talk um, because that will also give you an idea of how good you are. Or mm. like what Vincent was saying, whether you're putting people to sleep. I mean, you will listen to yourself and you're like, okay, I'm putting them to sleep. <laughs> this is not working, right? So then you can improve on your speech and you can know where you're going off or where you where, you know where you can improve. So I think that's very very good tip to just go back and listen to your own talk. I know you know it's really boring to listen to yourself and it's really oh, weird yeah, to hear your boring. own voice. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, but you get used to it after a while. You have to be mentally prepared when you watch your own self talk, yeah. and you just be like, "Is that me? Is that my voice? Yeah. Oh my god!" I was looking get, get, getting yeah, getting used to your own voice is strange. It takes a long time yeah. for you to get comfortable listening to your own voice. And actually, you are the most judgmental person. I feel like in the entire room, mm. uh, if you are among the audience watching your own <coughs> talk, so so yeah, don't be too harsh on yourself. Yeah. I guess that's the point. <laughs> uh, I think that what goes through my head a lot when I'm thinking about if I want to submit a talk at a conference is, oh, but you know, like, I could just write a blog post about this, or somebody else already wrote a blog post about this, so like, what am I adding mm -hmm. to the conversation? What am I adding to the community? Is everything I could possibly want to say about this, like, it was already said so much better by this blog post right here. Like, okay, I think both perspectives are equally valid. I think you could say, okay, fine, but everyone in this room has a voice, a mm -hmm. unique voice that nobody else has. And there are some things that you're passionate about that if you speak about it, it will draw my interest so much more than any blog post could because your personality is injected to it. Because as humans, we are much more uh, like receptive to information given face to face yeah. than we are reading some text on a screen. It's just a fact. So don't sell yourself short and say, well, oh, it was already written better than I could ever say it. Um, you could say something about it in a way that's going to reach people in a different way and in, in some ways even a better way than, than was written on a post. Mm. A lot, a lot of times on storytelling, your storytelling yeah. techniques exactly. as well. Yeah. So like some people, you know, do their slides very differently yeah. from how other people may do it even though the topic are similar and mm. your delivery might just mm. outclass the other person. Mm. And I think a lot, another thing too, like to, if you're nervous and you think I'm maybe I'm not good enough or I'm not an authority so like how, right this is sketch 22 how do you become a conference speaker where you're supposed to be an authority <laughs> uh, but you know you don't you ha you haven't done it yet so you can't be um, I think the I don't want to say self-deprecating style but like a style where you re like I like to say like I, I don't know a lot about what I'm talking about here or I'll say uh, you don't sell yourself short but you can you can admit I think I can connect to a room where I say you know, I didn't used to understand this. You know, six months ago, I had no idea about any of the stuff I'm about to talk to you about, and like, I slowly learned it. And let me share with you what I learned. Whatever, like that, that connects us as humans too, right? So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to feel like an expert. There are people in the room that are just below where you are now in what you've learned, and that's the best time for them to hear what you have to say. Because if I give a talk about some, you know, programming stuff that you know there's with a lot of you know advanced topics, I can do that, and only you know, people with a certain amount of programming experience are going to grok all that. Whereas if you talk about something technical that's you know relatively recently learned for you, people who ha aren't there yet are really going to are going to pick up on your message. Now. I want to add to that, like the the things I like unconsciously look for in conference talks, and it took me quite some time to look over it, like is authenticity. Mm. Is that person him or herself? Yeah. Mm. Right, and, and what's being proposed, and it, is it a bit daring? Is it a bit like does like does it come through that this is a, a step in one way or the other? Like th this slightly nervousness that people have before going on stage is an absolute good thing. Um, if it is not there, you come over as slightly like douchey sometimes as well. Like, and you can still see it, although somebody can comfortably walk on stage, you still get this feeling if there's a certain uh, humility or if that's lacking. Right, so like this, this part needs to be there. And actually, if you are looking a little nervous on stage, the, the audience starts rooting for you. Mm. They're like, oh, okay, like somebody is really trying something. <laughs> because they're not. They're sitting in the audience yeah. in the dark, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like somebody is trying something here, right? And if, if, if it goes through, they're going to be even more excited for you like that it all worked out, mm. right? So uh, like it's almost something that, that you want to look for, like that somebody is really not quite that comfortable yet. Yeah, and to add to that, actually, I, I heard, like, this is something that I heard, is that everybody, like, in the audience, I guess most of the people, uh, they show up with a good intention. They want you to succeed. Yep. They, they actually want to hear what you have to say. Yep. So 
So like let them. So just like that, that's that's kind of like assume the best intention of the audience as well. Also, you asked for like other specific tips, and I I thought about a person. I'm I'm pulling it up here. Uh, there's a, a, a another woman in our community named Sarah May. She's pretty vocal. She has a lot of great tips about conference speaking, and uh, she she wrote a tweet that I thought was really good, uh, and it says. Better talk proposals in three easy steps. One, put a verb in your title. Two, don't mention yourself. <laughs> Two, A, never say I. And three, don't use passive voice. So I think those are some concrete, actual, specific things for keeping in mind when you're writing the, the actual verbiage and text of your proposal. Right, so now, now we're at like the actual technicality of writing uh, a proposal. So do you have any like specific kind of advice in how to even find a topic and then how like it's like because I, I feel like in our daily work you know we we are being asked to uh, move this this page this logo to the right by five pixels and then or, or you know write another Terraform script to spin up this server service so you know like it's, it seems mundane so like how do I find interesting topic out of all these routine work that I do every day well, I, I think writing blog, it, you have to start writing before you can start speaking. Mm -hmm. um, because writing helps you sort of organize your thoughts mm -hmm. and it, it makes the transition into speaking much easier. Um, secret. The reason why I started writing was because um, in my first job, I was. I knew I was probably going to leave the job. <laughs> and I was like, I can't take the code away from me. but. But this is my code, so I just sort of like wrote it as like documentation for myself. Like how to do X. Uh -huh. It's technically <laughs> like documentation yeah. for myself, but you know, it's like, oh, it's a blog post. And then that's how I, because I know that I would want to know, like, I won't be able to remember if I never wrote it down. And I can't clone the code because it's not, like, <laughs> not mine. So like, okay, I'll write it in a blog post. And but after you start writing, then you start realizing that. Um, even though the tasks that we do daily are mundane, there will be some, you suddenly realize that, like for example, there are certain things that took you very long to, to, to fix, like suddenly, oh, I got it. Actually, it's, it's those, those moments that can actually expand into like some, uh, a blog post. Like you can just write about how you actually, how the process of which you solve this particular problem and things like that. And then as you continue to write, you realize there are certain topics that you really like. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where the ideas will start coming in. Is it, so for, for inspiration, for, for speaking topics, I feel, start if you've never written a blog post before. Maybe just start, you don't, it doesn't have to be an essay. It could be just like you know, a paragraph of how you fix something or like you read an article that's interesting. Just short paragraphs. It will eventually, as you get used to writing, it will, it will, it will expand itself. And, and that's where you will start to get, hey, maybe this is something that could be expanded into a talk or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good suggestion. I think being authentic is what Thomas brought up, which is very important. If, if you're really something, like what he said, if you really like the topic, if you're really something that you're passionate about, you've been thinking about a lot, you've been doing, you've been reading people's posts, I think that's a good topic to start off. I think the other, the other way to approach this also is something that Tim Moxley always talks about, which is, uh, if you want to learn something, uh, that's a great topic to, to, to propose at a local meetup or whatever because then you'll force yourself to go really deep into it and learn. So that's the other way. So you can actually go both ways. You, you could do it as something that you're already entrenched in or you're something that you want to get yourself entrenched in. So to me, it was something like web audio was something that was a new thing when I first started to get into the web community and I, re I wanted to get into it. So by you know doing talks uh, at meetups or by you know doing talks at uh, 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 pro proposing papers at the academic meet, uh, conference that I went to, I sort of forced myself to you know look at what I have been doing in web audio, what I've been trying to learn, and see what I can actually you know extract from my experiences and see if I can make a talk out of it. So that's another approach you could do. I'll as well. take on that. Uh, if you're wanting a new topic that you don't know yet much about. Uh, to propose for a conference or a meetup, um, that's a good start. But then I get like a million proposals about like I'm gonna do a Vujay sure. talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
Make it contextual to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's that's very important. Yes. Why you want to do it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, what do you want to build with it? Where you want to take it? What do you want to cross-reference yeah. it? Like, in which context, which technologies, people you want to connect, or what's the yeah. use case? Add something subjective to it, yeah. right? And then you have a story, and yeah. that's something exciting. I think story story is a very important. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm I don't want the hundred eighties education about like <laughs> oh I'm doing Vue JS now for seven years and I'm like. <laughs> 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 Your, yeah, I think your experience is very important, you know, like what, what, do you, what are the challenges you yeah. face, you know, how do you overcome them and what do you find good about it after all these, you know, hard work that you have done so far. I, I think it's very important to bring it back to, you know, your personal experience because that's what people want to listen to, you know, that's why, you know, when, you know, people who are working in companies like Google, Facebook or whatever, they say, oh, I'm going to talk about scalability, then people go, wow, yeah, I want to listen to it because I'm sure you have the That's scale, simple, right? right? You know, <laughs> I think. <laughs> right, so, so, you know, it's contextual, so uh, hopefully, you know, you can bring some of it across. Um, I think uh, in, in terms of how do you come up with, with topics, I, even in mundane tasks, I feel that if you take a step back mm. and, and look at it, I, I feel that uh, at, at every corner you know there's some story to be told uh and if you can definitely craft something out of it uh it can be a five minute lightning talk as well maybe it's not a 30 minute thing yeah. but i'm sure you can inject some humor into yeah. it to talk about you know why is it so you know funnily that this is so mundane or <laughs> you know what what can you what can you get out of this mundane experience like I, i've seen you know uh folks giving talks about uh, data migrations right uh like doing tons his job is basically doing data because his company bought a lot of other companies and yeah. he just have to do a lot of data migrations oh, wow. from company painful. a to company b right yeah. it's a mundane job right painful but you know he started to talk about his experience his challenges doing all these and injecting humor into it so if you give like a five minutes talk that you could talk about and share with the audience about what he's doing. That reminds me of a talk that his name Chris give on uh, JS Conf Asia, just complaining about web forms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, that was like I was sitting there. Is this guy just complaining about <laughs> web forms? <laughs> That's his whole talk, right? He was hilarious. It was just the rich. Yeah, it was. It was good, and I walk away, learn something. You know, like you know, like how not to build form. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and, and I still remember that talk. How many talks can I remember from JSConf Asia like that year? Uh, that, that's one one of the the few talks that I can remember. So, um, something that we haven't touched on on the panel yet that I think is important. Uh, I think every tech conference needs some what I'm going to call soft talks mm -hmm. that aren't hardcore technical talks. Uh, it can be things about uh, mental health uh, or emotional health in, in the industry. I think that's a topic that all of us could always you know, listen to and benefit from. Uh, it could be a topic about your own experiences uh, if you, it, it could be quite uncomfortable, but you know, you you can share experiences you've had that were not great, and you know, let the room know how we can all make the the community better for you and people like you based on uh, what's worked or what's not worked in your own experiences in the tech community. Um, it could be about uh, something positive that, that again doesn't have a direct thing to do with tech, but like physical health too, right? Like you, yeah. you could say. We all sit at desks all day. Oh, yeah. It sucks. Like we're dying. Here's the research to prove it. Maybe it's. <laughs> let's not. I mean, maybe that's not true. true but maybe true. it is. <laughs> it's almost uh, true. The point is, like, there there can be things that you are passionate about and that the room will totally connect with yeah. that are not code slides on a screen. Mm -hmm. And it's damn refreshing to have talks like that at a conference too. So, uh, yeah. don't don't limit what your talks have to be only about hardcore. When you propose these, authenticity and humility become even more important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. more important. Yeah, so that's that's like my first talk was on pair programming. Now it's like so it's nothing really to do with hard technical mm. stuff, and then that really takes a lot of the kind of pressure off as well because you know what can I say that is wrong? It's mm. like yeah. it's my personal experience. You can't say like that is not right. You know? yeah. <laughs> so so I think that's that's a very good start for um, for just tech speaking on tech conferences. Just start with a non technical topic. It's a good way to get in. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, we've covered like actually we're running out of time, but <laughs> we've, so far we only pretty much only covered the proposal part, and we barely touched the uh, the speaking part. So the next question is on: Do you have any like tips and tricks on giving delivering a good talk? How do you engage your audience, and then you know do you need to prepare for your uh, you know uh, frequently? Uh, Thank you. No. Do you need to <laughs> prepare for a Q and A session and all that stuff? 
the thing that helps me the most, and even right now what helps me, is there's always going to be at least one person in the room who you can look at and know that that person's going to make eye contact, with, yeah. eye contact with you and nod along with you. And just find those people in the room <laughs> because you can connect to them. And whenever you're nervous, you can find them and they'll pull you back and make you feel safe and secure. <coughs> so like that is a super tangible tip that will, you can always use. The other one uh, is... Yeah. So <laughs> every every company. If you can find her, yeah, she's, uh, yeah. she's, she's an awesome audience. Like I just need to spot her in the in the audience, so and I'm happy. Oh, I just oh, need to look oh. at her as a uh, Chimay's wife. The other the other concrete tip I want to give you just about like handling butterflies or stage fright or whatever you want to call it. Um, my mom used to be an actress, and she gave me this tip many years ago. Uh, it, when you're standing on stage. You're almost always standing, right? Yeah. There's something you can do that will just help you focus that nobody else can see. And what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing my big toe into the floor. <laughs> that just gives you something kind of like concrete <laughs> to think about to do. And it, like, say if you want to fidget or whatever, it's a fidgeting thing that you can do that, that nobody can see. And that, I, I don't know how it works, but it does. It just gives your brain something to focus on that's not being nervous. So push your big toe into the floor. It's good nice. Um, I think it's important to find your own delivery, uh, you know, presentation style. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good for you to, uh, to look at a lot of videos, you know, of how other speakers are doing it. Because I think even the way you craft your slides would uh, impact, you know, how you do your delivery as well. Some speakers like to have a lot more text on the slides yeah. uh, mm. and read off it or not read off it, but still have a lot of text. Some speakers like to have just one word. <laughs> on the slide itself and you know blabber a lot of stuff yeah. about it some speakers like to have just picture mm. right and nothing else that's totally unrelated maybe <laughs> and things like so you need to find your your delivery style I think firstly then craft craft your slides then after that uh, you know prepare on how you'll be delivering that slide deck that you have prepared uh, I, I think it's important to, to find find what you prefer to do so there are a lot of speak i mean there, there's a lot of conference talks out there now go go find you know go watch them and see who you connect with better mm -hmm. uh, you know which style you prefer and just keep on watching that specific speaker doing a bunch of other talks yeah. and see how they do their slides how they give their delivery and for a start just copy them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a good one mm -hmm. so so one of the things that i uh, personally do is i write out my talks uh, i physically write up my talks. Uh, it's really painstaking and really annoying initially, but once you get used to it, so it does two important things. One is it helps you uh, know how, how long your talk's gonna be. I don't know about you guys, but every time I start doing a talk, I always overflow the time limit, always. Because Same. I'm like, I, I'm gonna talk about this, 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 uh, okay, well, these three things, it's fine, I'll fit in the time. And then you actually do it, you actually practice it, and you're like, oh, this is like double the time. Mm. So I think writing it out really helps because it helps you to organize bits and you can say, okay, I, I, I wanna remove, I wanna reduce five minutes, okay, this bit I'm gonna remove, this bit I'm gonna remove. Yeah. It also helps you memorize your talk or at least yeah. memorize the flow of your talk, yeah. uh, having, having written it down, I it's something about writing that mm -hmm. really helps you. That. Remember I sang Min, 2012, the Korean guy that couldn't speak English? Yeah. He, he wrote came that. with his talk like written down yeah. and, and translated from Korean to English yeah. together with some friends. He worked for this, on this for hours and he recited a 30 minute talk. It's on YouTube, you can check it out. Like fully in English. And in the end, he was like, uh, I'm sorry, I can't take any questions because I actually don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> Like, that guy was crazy. But like, but, so. so it works for me. It may not work for everyone, but it totally works for me. It, it makes me be way more comfortable with my talk than uh, before thing. That, that's one super important thing. And, and I, the other thing about like, like pushing your toes and your feet, I think breathing is super important. Like just breathing deeply before you get on the stage helps you sort of deal with a lot of the butterflies in your stomach much better. So these two recent tips. Okay, I, I do the same as uh, Jin Mei because I will always ask how much time I have mm. and the way I prepare my slides is that I'm actually, it's the same as if I write my blog post. So if anybody has ever read any of my blog posts, you realize that I write exactly the same way as I talk. So it's, it's um, in, a, in a sense, I, the way I, I do my slides is like I already have the I'm like giving the talk in my brain and then I'll just do the slides to, to fit what I'm trying to say so suddenly I'll be like spending two hours trying to find a picture of Beyonce that sort of thing um, but I, I not do, many of those yeah. and, <laughs> it takes a while to find them eh? but I write I do write it out I do write it out and I actually from like sometimes when I get stuck what I do is I will just go through the entire sure. it's like 
instead of I do it differently for other people so I don't finish it before I polish I polish it as I as as I write mm. because sometimes I get stuck I can't continue I'll just go to the top and just polish it so I actually literally just give the top so because when you give the top out loud then you realize that, yeah. oh it doesn't flow as nicely yeah. as mm. I thought it so would have so usually that's what I do and so I have my for conference talks I have everything out almost word for word um so the, the the thing about this is that you don't want to be reading off the script. No. Um but if you can if you can do it without people knowing that you're reading off the script, that's great. That's yeah, that's great. But you had I think it's important to practice with the slides. So yes. you you don't when you transit slides you so, don't suddenly uh, <laughs> no yes. awkward pause. Mm. And so you can only do that if you actually give like speak the, the talk up you don't have to speak it in front of a person you just need to hear your own voice you hear yourself saying it and then you'll know that like whether it flows or not yeah, actually yeah. Pr about practicing I think you should try to practice as much as you can with the exact same slides you're going to be using mm. and if you're doing any demos or props uh, make Life sure it's is the exactly the same the uh, kind of uh, uh, environment you know if networking etc everything mm. Uh, as you're going to do it because uh, then you'll figure out all the issues that you'll end up having you may end up having and really it's important to build your confidence with the same props you know if you're using a clicker try to use the same clicker yeah. because it's it's really helpful to have all the stuff in the it's right it's like place. deployment guys same environment yes. every time yeah. <laughs> yes. same concept yes. don't, don't, don't make slides that exactly have the same stuff that you're talking mm. way, it's like, oh yeah it's slides are additional yeah. Like don't read your bullet points. Right? Yeah. Don't don't just read from it. Yeah. You can do that if it's really important, mm -hmm. right? The, the important bits you can read off your slides, but don't make that the general thing. <laughs> all right, thank you all. And uh, now um, we're gonna open the floor. And then, do you have any questions you would like to ask our panelists? Anything? They might not answer though, but <laughs> you can always ask. Uh, anything that's different from talking at meetups versus conferences, apart from just the size of the audience that is quite anything uh, to keep in mind? I think it's easier to get feedback from the group afterwards, right? I feel like at a conference, that it's already game day, right? To use the sport mm. analogy, <laughs> but uh, the meetup is, is like the game practice, mm. or like you're doing a pickup game somewhere, for example. And so I would say, uh, at a meetup, I give a talk and I'll say, I'm thinking, guys, I'm thinking about giving this talk at a conference, so. Could you please, afterwards, I come up to me, let me know your thoughts. Uh, how can I improve this? What made sense? What didn't make sense? It's very easy to get that at a meetup because we can just talk afterwards. So that's one thing. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Just like practice your conference talk on meetups. Meet yep. yeah. 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 There's one thing, there was one of the original JSConf concepts. JSConf used to be a pride itself of being a flat floor conference. Meetups are generally flat floor, mm. right? So like the people sitting here and like the speaker is barely elevated. In the last row, you barely see them. And uh, every JS comes used to be that way. It's just that they have grown to a size where you don't find venues that can actually afford that. And so, stupidly enough, we have to use a stage now so that everybody can see and we can actually uh, do proper things. But I think that's one of the main differences is, is this feels cozy because you're kind of in the same floor. Yeah. And the moment you're on a stage and you're looking at this hall of people of which 90% are unknown or more, um, there's a whole different feeling of being judged. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that is the yeah. the thing, and like, which is not true, this feeling necessarily. Like, <laughs> normally, the audience is rooting for the speaker, yeah. um, specifically if, if there is a certain humility in, in the presence of the speaker, even when you just walk on stage. Um, but it's it just, if you actively think about it, it becomes like, oh my god, like it's all these people. Yeah. So. That's the main difference, really, is, is just this, this unknown factor. The other technical thing about being on stage is uh, lights blind you, uh, and it startles you. So the first time you go up, uh, you'll be startled, and you just don't know what to do. Because it's like you walk in, and you suddenly you have all these lights, and you're like, whoa. And that could put you on the wrong foot to start, and then mm. once you start on the wrong foot, you know, like you make a mistake, and then you blame yourself even more. Mm. This goes down. I actually found that a good thing because for the CSS con, the the, you see was, the audience. It, yeah, you couldn't see the audience, so it was great. Like I can't see any of your judgmental faces. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. I'm having a grand old time by myself on the stage. Worst case, assume most people are just on their laptops anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the use of mics can be different as well yes. uh, oh, because okay. it's very use, uh, cool. uh, 
handheld mic or oh, a lapel yeah. mic, right? Yes. So some people might not be when you speak at meetups, maybe you don't use yeah. mics that often. Oh, yeah, so yeah. some Hearing people your own voice, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the the action of holding a mic, yeah. right? Good. Actually, the one tip would be to go beforehand and try out the mic and mm. make sure you know how it works because some mics are really bad. You have to hold them really close or really mm. far, mm. and having to do that in the middle of your speech is much more complicated. And you get you get again you get distracted mm. if you can do it yeah. at the beginning or before. You know how to use it. You know where to clip it and mm. or get sometimes all that it's set a up. rostrum thing yeah. that you have to tune up and down or I don't know what you have to do. And the good thing is if you have Tim May or Jing hosting you at the conference, they're gonna do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add to that. Uh, learn to use a microphone. Mm, it's it's very not important. as simple as spend two minutes yeah. playing yeah. with it. It's a yeah. different experience to speaking with your mouth. You mm -hmm. must project. Yes. People think, oh, I've got a microphone, I can speak. Yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 And you want your guys going. Yes. <laughs> Only <laughs> if you're your Celine Dion. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, audio guys can go some distance to fix that. But yeah. if the speaker is not yeah. projecting properly. Yes. Always holding the microphone <laughs> someplace else, mm. then. No, you could. You can also uh, hold it too close and and like almost eat the microphone. That, oh, yeah. that does not work either. Some people do that. And that's love, love, love yeah. breathing yeah. sound. So, so it, yeah, if, if you really the, the Madonna mics are the best because you don't have to think yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 Well, but actually not true because mm -hmm. if you move a lot, uh, they brush yeah. against your cheeks and uh, and then they they, ru they rustle as well. So right. we, oh, once okay. we started talking about audio, we might. <laughs> <laughs> oh my don't, God. don't don't get me started. But but no. It's, uh, the other way around, actually, if anybody wants to play with microphones and try it out before your speech, come talk to me. I will. I have microphones <laughs> yeah. to lend out and for you to play with if you want. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. Any more questions? Yes. Here's a topic. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which is like sometimes I prepare my content and then I realize it's too much. I can't fit everything in the talk that I want to talk about. So I purposely took out some of the points and I'm like, I'll see if they're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> if they're paying attention, they would ask about that in, in Q&A and, and then I can answer it. Then I'm like, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Prepare the extra slides at the back of the <laughs> <laughs> I was prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's another trick. You can even tell someone in the audience to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> Provide something you couldn't fit in. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, perhaps a simpler starting point is just to make use of the meetups as the present the meetup first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because Q and A, you know, conversational context is great practice for yeah. doing the same thing in front yeah. of a bunch of people. Yeah. Oh. Um, so a lot of the advice are mostly for first time speaker but let's say you have given a talk and you are finding that you are putting people asleep uh, what can you do to improve? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a bit more of the soft side of speaking already. Um, so the advice that uh, s s uh, most of them already said it's like you watch videos of other speakers. My my advice is not just watch tech speakers. Watch mm. speakers in general who are really good. Um, I personally I think the best public speaker I can think of is actually Michelle Obama. Mm. Mm. The way it, it's you 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 can observe how mm. she she carries the pace. She she doesn't. Ju you should. We should watch those things. Like you watch how people host the Oscars, yeah. the host, not the guys giving out the awards again, but the actual host and the way they, they are, they do they gesture, the way they pace the talks. Sometimes there'll be pauses. The pauses sound very natural, but they are actually not. They are yeah. they are sort of factored in is to yeah. keep the pace of the talk, and they will vary the cadence of their talk. They'll vary the tone. They'll emphasize certain words. Things like that you will only realize if you watch like pe people are doing real public speaking yep. it's not like I'm, oh I'm presenting some, something so I think those talks um, Michelle Obama does, did, did a lot of talks like there, there are 8 years worth of Michelle Obama you can search for um, Barack Obama does pretty good talks as well and um, yeah those, those uh, like yep. entertainment host people the way they talk is really different or stand up comedians Stand up comedians also do a really good job, and, and there, are, there are tricks that you can pick up from there. Yeah. There's a Trevor Noah bit actually. He goes about, oh, Noah. Uh, he goes about how Barack Obama learned public speaking, and it was like another uh, like guy who was training him, and, and uh, it was Nelson, Nelson Mandela. Mandela. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you saw that bit, right? It was like slower. <laughs> slower, slower, right? Deeper voice, slower, until you eventually arrived at what sounded like Barack Obama, like because he's so slow. Such <laughs> long breaks, yeah. and it is kind of true. I think if you put people asleep, like say less, yeah. like like make your talk more concise mm -hmm. on like very few points you want to emphasize, and just talk slower, right? And like don't be afraid to make a one or two second break, like if you want to really emphasize something and have it yeah. stay there. Yeah. Um, that that might just help to like keep people uh, yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of technical speaking uh, tips and tricks that you can look up online there's a lot of resources I was looking through to prepare for this panel I was looking through like all the resources <laughs> wow. I, I, I can share a bitly URL later the, I made a gist of a bunch of things you can read up online there's a lot of very technical like what kind of you're saying like cadence and mm -hmm. tone so if you really want to get into that there is a lot of material out there there's a lot of um, videos out there you can look at and I think uh, one other thing would be to uh, practice your talk in front of some specific person. Yeah, that's a great book. Uh, uh, Recommended to everybody. Yeah. Like, this might be the best guide. Actually, there's a couple of really good speaking. TED Talks about talking. Yeah. Uh, well, this that's is really good. Meta. I mean, it's, it's very complete and a bit scary sometimes because it is so complete, but it is definitely the, the guide to go for. And Actually, just cutting as a TEDx organizer, what we do, um, I'm not sure about tech conferences, but we actually prepare speaker coaches, yeah, nice. and uh, there are lots of them out there, nice. and it really pays to, I mean, sometimes if you're giving a conference, it's a community conference, a lot of them are happy to help, yeah. mm. just practice your talking, exactly. because they're yeah. not tech people, yeah. they know uh, how to look, go through your talking, sure. with yeah. your script, tell you, okay, you're getting too technical, this yeah. is how you can rephrase yeah. things, yeah. and a good uh, speaker coach actually doesn't enforce like a style on sure. you, so you, mm -hmm. you, you copy your line because that's the right way to do it and yep. you lose your personality and a good speaker coach will help unearth kind of your style with oh, you cool. and then develop into something that yes. is uniquely you, that is authentic, yep. I think.
that's quite important. So I, I, I hope this meetup actually is mm -hmm. going to repeat itself as well, and and we can if people are serious about improving their performance yeah. or being a first time speaker, um, not only for conferences here but abroad. Uh, like I'm personally very happy to help with with applications or or yeah. rehearsal yeah. or so on, and I'm quite sure there are more people that you'll find. Uh, so I think as as a community offering. Um, that's something that I would like to maintain, and uh, I offer that to like conference speakers of my conference anyway. Awesome. Yeah. Can I have one more quick thing? Um, we haven't talked about body language, and I think that's yes. really important, right? So, like, if you're giving a talk, and you, there's just something about like your body. If you look uncomfortable, people are going to feel uncomfortable <laughs> yes. paying attention to you. Yes. Whereas if you say, you know, broader chest, shoulders back, stand up straight, and straight doesn't come from your back; it comes from your sternum. Just think about keeping your sternum like, up, and that's all you need to do. If you have good posture, uh, if you have comfortable but confident body language, people will connect with you a lot more than if you're just a little slunched and you know, like what's like when I. This is how I normally am, right? Like I stand on, on my way on one leg, and yeah. like that's okay. But it it doesn't I don't know it doesn't work as well at a conference where you really just want to be a stable presence for the room. The general rule is good. There are people that really pull it off. Like I was amazed with Cheon last year, for example, when he always stands awkwardly. I will give it on another example of someone who I think yeah. is great. Like a woman named Julia Evans. She's brilliant. She gives amazing talks that that are just like her blog posts too. Uh, and, and she's just she's a dream to watch because she's the total opposite of what I just said. She's like super awkward all the right. time, and I mean this in like a loving way, and I think she'll agree. <laughs> and, and like she says it herself, but she goes on stage and she, you can just yeah. you can sense her discomfort. But there's something about the way she does it where she's so herself yeah. about it yeah. That, yeah. that you connect to that, and you're like, yeah. yeah, I feel that way too. And so I love this refreshing personality yeah. who can be that uncomfortable talking to me on stage <laughs> in a way that you just so it can work. So you, you need to you need awkward, to be, be fully yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, be, be fully it, committed. Yeah. No, I, th I think it's a personal style thing, right? Yeah, like what yeah. she was saying that it, you know, if you have that personal style, if you can draw it out, if it, that works for you and yeah. the way you deliver your content, you might have to adjust your speech to that, but uh, it could work. Yeah. Usually three things I feel is, is the content. Uh, you don't go too deep in the conferences. Talk. What you want to do is to spread an idea yeah. so that people will think about it and even talk to you about it. You don't have to go you know, deep down into the technical code level, this specific line, you know, you know what, what does it do, etc. And then the, the, the second thing is um, your, your tone. Like don't go down, uh, you know, don't always go down. I think that puts people to sleep. And then the third thing is actually humor. Uh, I think you, we should inject humor into the, the, yeah. the talk. And humor can be like stand-up comedic humor <laughs> or it can be self-deprecating humor. Right? Easiest kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cat, love everybody memes. loves cat, cat memes. memes. Yes. <laughs> or cat memes. Um, yeah. I, would, I would go about that with figure that out for yourself. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. Like, if you really feel like you're not a funny person, maybe not. Maybe yeah. Not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Like there's, there's People that force themselves to no, be funny. Really okay. weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's true too. But it is it can be a good tool. Mm. Cool. Awesome. So let's take a break and thank you all. Uh, the panelists and the audience for the